Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a playthrough of All Time Wrestling, the solo play specifically. This is a competitive and solo game of uh, professional wrestling, as you can probably guess. And there's a new extreme edition of the game on crowdfunding right now, but they sent me a review copy of one of the previous editions that did include a solo expansion, and I'll be showing how it plays. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So in all-time wrestling, they do, uh, like I said, have a solo mode, which is what I'll be showing. And they have uh, several like different ways you can play. You can play in a cage match or in a last man standing match. And they even have like a campaign where your character kind of goes through different phases of their like career and gets like level ups and unlocks uh, different like allies and things. But I'm showing just the basic game, and you're playing these attack cards that will deal a certain amount of damage, will take a certain amount of your stamina, this yellow lightning bolt here, require a certain roll to hit, kind of like their accuracy, and will give you a certain amount of momentum. And they also have these different icons that can allow you to like combo attacks into each other or taunt somebody after the attack. And you're spending your stamina to fire off these attacks. You're trying to lower the opponent's health before they lower your health. And once their health gets low, you can play a card like this pile driver that has a pin icon on it, and uh, if they don't kick out in time after three attempts, then they lose the game. But you also have ways to defend, reverse the attack, and, and basically whoever is like currently on the attack gets to keep on playing cards until they get foiled in their attack or until they choose to stop. It's called having the initiative. Like one player is the one like doing a ton of hits. You know, like in wrestling, they tend to get a bunch of combos together. And I mentioned momentum. It's going to be going left and right on this little tracker here. And when it's on your side, you can eventually get some bonuses to your uh, two hit numbers for your big finisher moves. And as for the Atoma in the solo mode, they're going to be playing uh, random attack cards. You use, uh, instead of rolling dice, you use Atoma cards to kind of balance out their luck in rolls. And they generally have replacement abilities for like the special abilities of the character they're playing. Um, they will always have like ways to reverse and such, and then they have like generally one or two special abilities for the character. And they don't track stamina, they don't track hand size, basically they can just play as many cards as they want, and it's really just their health you have to keep track of. And I'd mentioned you do roll uh, dice for your own attacks, you also roll this Atoma die to, to see whether they defend or not for each of your attacks. And those are the basics, uh, I'm being Macho Man Randy Savage, oh yeah, and uh, we're going against Oda Surugi, who's like a cyborg, so I don't think he's a real fighter, <laughs> but they do have other uh, real personalities in this one. By the way, if you are real, Oda, I apologize. And the Atoma always takes the first turn, so let's get into the playthrough and see what attack they're trying to do. Okay, they're trying to get me into a rear naked choke, so uh, it will deal five damage if it hits me. It would cost two stamina, but the Atoma never tracks stamina. It needs a five plus to hit. And it'll get them three momentum if they hit. And it's also a pinning attack. So if they hit with this, I have to roll for pinning automatically. Now, five plus, pretty low odds for their first attack. So instead of using a defensive option, I think I should probably just uh, draw. But let's, let me tell you how you can defend. So it's all summarized here. Uh, if they do a bunch of weak damage attacks in a row, you can just block with stamina. You can always discard two cards to block. You can use your reversal token, but you only have one of those per game. Or you can use an ability. Randy Savage has one of those. So basically, I have two once per game ways to cancel an attack, or I can discard two cards. But again, I'm not going to do that. Let's just hope they don't get a five or a six. They didn't. So uh, this D4 is what's used. And then the K down here is their kick out. So if I'm like trying to pin them, they'll flip a card and see what uh, their result is. Now, when they miss an attack like this, it gets shuffled back in the deck. Although, uh, whereas the player can lose the game by running out of cards and running out of options, uh, the Atoma can just go through the deck again. But since they miss an attack, the initiative comes over to me. So Randy Savage's ability is, uh, like I said, he has once per game reversal. He also has Brass Knuckles. He can uh, trigger to gain the initiative away and cancel the person's attack. But then they can reverse the Brass Knuckles on a 5-plus roller by using a reversal. Uh, for the AI, they always just uh, try for the 5-plus roll with their little deck. Macho Madness gives me a little bonus after I successfully hit. And then my ongoing always-on ability means that I get an extra roll every time someone's trying to pin me, which unfortunately doesn't help much if your health is down, because how the uh, pinning works is you have to roll 2d6 and get equal to or under your current health. And uh, you get minus one re-roll instead of three, you get only two when you're down in uh, the really low health area. And similar, when you're in a really low stamina area, all your opponent's attacks have an easier time hitting. 
All right, so you get to pick your starting hand. Uh, the total amount of damage can add up to more than nine. And let's go ahead and try to show y'all a combo. Let's do a punch. So it's uh, one stamina, only going to do one damage, but we'll almost always hit and get me some momentum. So I roll the dice all at the same time. Uh, and on easier medium difficulty, you roll two dice. And if either one is over or equal to the to hit number than you hit, that's to compensate for the fact that the AI can uh, guard a lot more often than uh, other characters can. Ah, darn it. Okay, so I did hit, but unfortunately, uh, when it's an attack with one or two damage, they have a one six chance. There's two of these sides of automatically just blocking it at no cost to them. That's the worst result I could have gotten. Although it's not too terrible a thing when one of your attacks is blocked, you just shuffle it back into your deck and you draw a replacement. So it doesn't actually like push you closer to uh, running out of cards in your deck. I did lose the one stamina though. All right, that means it's back around to Oda Surugi and he's trying to do a vertical suplex. Get on a three plus two damage and two momentum. I mean, I don't know. I, I really feel like I gotta <laughs> save like my best defenses for their biggest attacks. Okay, so he does hit with a five. So remember, he doesn't spend stamina, but I lose two health and he gains two momentum. So not enough. You have to be in the yellow and the red to actually get bonuses to your best attacks. Now, whenever an attack is done successfully against you, you can either gain a stamina or gain a card. Let's let's get a card and have more. Uh, ooh, a big diving elbow drop. That's my I think biggest finisher for Randy Savage's deck. Now, after an attack, players, if the uh, card had an icon like this, can choose to do recoveries and taunts, which give them some stuff, but also give the opponent some stuff. The Atoma will never do that, but if uh, there were these little combo icons down here, which this one doesn't have, the next card potent could potentially get a bonus, but nobody's going to go again. All right, now we're trying to do a flying sidekick. Three damage, oof, and a three plus to hit. Oh, man, I could, I could discard two cards, but... They've drawn well. They haven't gotten any ones or twos yet. Maybe I'll get lucky. Nope. Okay, they hit. <laughs> so I lose three more damage and they get two more momentum. And maybe I'll get a stamina this time. Okay, now this time they do have some icons. So let's see if the next card matches up. It does. Okay, so here's how this works. You look at the right icon on the card that was just played and the left icon on the next card. And if either icon matches, they get the bonus. Uh, for circles, it's plus one damage. For squares, it's minus one to hit value. So now for this gotch pile driver they would need a five or a six instead of just a six the momentum is not far enough to give them an extra bonus but yeah in that case i would take six damage taking me down to five and i'd have to try not to get pinned gosh but still there's a really good chance they'll well not a really good chance so uh for clarity there's about three of each value so three sixes and two fives would hit here that's like five cards out of 15 left it's like a one-third chance that's uh, um yeah now let's let him do it. Let's let him do it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> so he did miss. All right. So that card gets shuffled back in. And yeah, these ones are discarded. You can just kind of keep them over here. It's back to me. Let's see if we can get some stuff going. Um, <laughs> I'll start with a body slam. All right, so that's one stamina. I'm going to try to get a little bit of damage going here. And okay, good. So on a blank, they don't do anything. And I got at least a two plus on one of the dice. So one damage, one momentum. So they're down to 15, although uh, this guy, Oda Sarugi, oh, I forgot. Anytime he successfully grapples, it does one stamina. Okay, he didn't do any successful grapples to me. But yeah, his other uh, once per game ability is that he gains three health when he goes down to seven or less, which is super annoying, I'll tell you. But yeah, momentum is a little bit closer to my side. So now I could taunt, which would get me two more cards, one momentum, one stamina, but would also give him uh, the only one the opponent uh, or the Atoma cares about is the plus one health. That would literally undo my attack. So I'm going to go for using this combo icon instead for this one, Lariat Takedown. So this is normally a two damage attack, but because the circles match up in color, it's going to be a three damage attack if I hit. It costs one stamina and it hits on a three plus. Here we go. Okay, I was at 11 life. Okay, good. I hit and he didn't block. That was good. So three damage, two momentum. Awesome. One, two, three. All right, and what, I could stop. Yeah, so one of your options when you could attack is always a stop, and you can either regain three stamina or draw a card. But now let's keep going. I want to do... So this square means I would have plus or, you know, an easier time hitting. Let's try a pile driver, needing a four plus because of the bonus. All right, this could be big. Here we go. So that cost me three stamina. One, two, three. I'm down to ten. And... Okay, that was a great roll. So on a not one to two, this does nothing, and I'm doing four damage. So that's definitely not working. And I hit, so four damage to him, plus three momentum, and I can try to pin him. 
one, two, three, four. So not quite enough to use his half human to gain three life yet. So one, two, three momentum. Well, is that really negative? Now, should I try to pin him? I mean, seems like a waste, right? The chances that he's not going to get <laughs> an eight or less. Um, and I'm almost like kind of afraid to draw these cards. Well, whatever. Let's try it. So, okay. Yep. He kicked out with the two. Oh, but I got rid of a five card. Yay. That was good. Now, I still keep the initiative after a pin attempt. That does not uh, remove the initiative. So, geez, the pile driver. Hmm. I do have that icon. I could just go for it and do the diving elbow drop. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Let's say I go and use Macho Madness. After a successful attack, I regain one stamina and I gain one momentum. And then this is gone. And yeah, I should probably try to get into the yellow or the red before I use my big attack. But I'm running low on cards. What if I use Running Bionic Elbow with the intention of trying to taunt him afterwards? Okay, so I don't get any bonus from the combo. Um, it costs me one stamina. Well, you do a single damage if I hit. And wow. <laughs> He's really not defending very well. Um, so I'm doing one damage and getting plus two momentum. Momentum is what I really cared about because now all my special and finisher moves have one easier chance hitting. All right, so that was one damage, which means he immediately uses half human once per game and goes back up to 10 life. Darn it. And then I'm immediately going to taunt because I had uh, that option on running bionic elbow. So he gains back the life I did. So he's actually way above where he was. But I get a stamina, a momentum, and two card draw. Get me closer to the red. That two card is what I really care about. All right, here we go. Let's see. Now it is a uh, one option on a card. So like if you taunt, you can't also use a combo. No, diving elbow drop is a uh, atomic drop. That's not a special. It would give me two more momentum. That would get me into the red with plus two to all my specials. And then, like, my sleeper hole and only need a two plus to hit. All right, let's go for the atomic drop. I mean, at some point, this guy's got to actually reverse me, right? <laughs> Here, we'll clean these up a bit. All right, so that cost me two stamina. I'm hitting on a three plus. Okay, and... Ah, darn it. All right, so it is two damage. And that uh, doesn't count any, like, bonuses. So, like, if this had comboed or had some other ability making it three damage, it wouldn't matter. So he does block that. So this one goes back in my deck, and I get a replacement. But that was a big series of turns. Uh, I've only got three. Oh, that's right. i got to get a replacement. So I've got four cards, decent stamina, and he's... Actually, he's not that hurt, is he? Yeah, we're tied for health, so <laughs> I shouldn't be bragging too much. Okay, he's going to try to punch me. Uh, definitely not going to try to block that. It's not worth any of my abilities to stop a single damage. He does hit and gets a momentum. So still in my yellow and down to 10. All right, what's next? Okay, no combo there. Oh, it's the pile driver again. Uh, but this time he really needs a six to hit. Have we seen any sixes? We haven't. There's about 12 cards left and three of them would succeed. That seems a little iffy. Let's uh, go to use a reversal. Cost me two stamina. This is once per game. Uh, he takes two damage and I gain two momentum, which means he's down to nine and up to seven momentum on my side. And the pile driver gets shuffled back in again. Oh, and I forgot. After the uh, punch, I should have gotten, what, a stamina or a draw? I got decent cards. Let's get a little bit more stamina. All right, so even a single anything would get me into the red. Um, so, like, maybe the jab or snake eyes. Snake Eyes does more damage and less momentum, but I don't care as much about the momentum, so I'll play Snake Eyes. So need a two to hit, and I don't want to see that uh, shield again. Gosh darn it. Okay, so I get shuffled back in. Wait, did I spend the... I did not spend the stamina, I don't think. Yeah, that was a bummer. All right, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so back to him, and he's trying to do a flying knee. Two damage, one momentum, I'll just let it go. Oh, and he actually misses. <laughs> All right, great. Which means he definitely would have missed that giant attack I used my reversal on, but that's okay. All right, I still want to get momentum there. So let's do... Uh, I got an atomic drop. Hits on a three plus. Okay, we'll try that. So that's two stamina. So now I'm easier to hit for him, just to note. <laughs> and... Okay, uh, this one's uh, good. So this means he gets an extra reversal cube, and I did hit. I'm playing on easy mode where he only starts with one of these, so basically he just gets another one, and whenever he rolls this symbol, which is I think only one side of the uh, die, then if I'm doing three plus damage, he'll reverse it, so he can reverse a bunch of times throughout the game, unlike me where I can only reverse once. Now if he had rolled that same result, but he already had three, I think then he performs a reversal if I remember right. But alright, I did uh, two damage to him, so he's back down to seven. And I got two momentum, which means now uh, all my special and finisher attacks have two easier time hitting. So what the hell? Let's try to kill this guy. Let's do a diving elbow drop. Uh, all right. So <laughs> if this hits, it's a really good chance I'll pin him. Look, uh, he'll have minus one uh, kickoff attempts or kick out attempts. He'll be down five. So I only have two life. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll die if I hit and he doesn't reverse it. 
which he did it. Ooh, and I hit. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, it's a six to hit, minus two for the red. So I'm dealing five damage. I get three momentum. That doesn't really matter. And he gets minus one kick out attempt. And because he's in the uh, four or less area, he gets even minus one also. So he gets a single kick out attempt. If this is a two, because a one, you can't uh, roll. Whoa, what? How could his kick out be a one? <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I guess I didn't notice it before, but I just looked through and all of the uh, the NPC kickout card attempt values are one through six, even though in the actual game you roll two dice. He can even kick out with one health. All right, uh, he guess he kicked out. Okay, I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, guess I got to hit him again. I don't think I have. Oh, I do. Okay, so at least Sleeper Hold can pin him. All right, let's go for the Sleeper Hold. I do still have barely enough stamina. That brings you down to zero. But it's a special attack, so instead of a four plus, I need a two plus to hit. And he didn't... Okay, he didn't reverse it, so I got him again. He's down uh, to one life, because he can't go below one. And he gets two attempts this time, because the only negative affecting him is that. So, okay, that's not a one or less. What? It, oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm just confused, uh, just to explain. Uh, I, I've never pinned them when their life was so low. When you're playing against a regular player, if they have one health, they can't escape a kick out attempt. What they have to do is, oh, I guess that, that might be what it's modeling. So for a regular player, you can spend stamina before each of your kick out attempts to uh, bring your health back up. Every three stamina gives you one health. But yeah, uh, geez, do I even have any like more? I think I have more pin cards. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Well, in any case, I'm definitely going to stop playing cards and gain three stamina back <laughs> because what else am I supposed to do? Yeah, all I've got is a jab in my hand. Great. You know, looking through my discard pile, I have three pin cards. I think it's all my pins. So how do I win? Hmm. So, all right, let's, uh, let's play it out, see if they can pin us. But <laughs> kind of seeing a, uh, a broken bit in the game. Okay, they're doing a flying arm bar. Um, I guess I won't block it. And they hit. Good job. And hey, there's another K1. Great. Uh, so they do two damage to me and get two momentum. Oh, and that was a grapple, so I lose an extra stamina. And that's right. They have uh, one easier time hitting. And then they're going to do a haymaker. Well, hey, let's let them do it. Uh, oh, they actually miss. Okay. I guess they'll draw a card as my bonus. Oh, wait. No, it's just a special. There's no pin there. All right. Uh, I don't know. Get three stamina back. Yay. All right. And then uh, they do an octopus stretch. Okay, let's let them. They missed again. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. Good. There is a... They did figure this out. I was stupid to think they didn't. <laughs> you, uh, Whenever your finisher hits or misses, it always gets shuffled back into your deck. By the way, I'm going to draw a card. All right. So now I actually care to try to win again. Oh, and I did. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's get him. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. And they don't have any ones left, right? Because we drew all their sixes. But they might, like, reverse this. Whatever. Going for it. True stamina. Don't reverse me. Okay, beautiful. Oh, that's not a hit. Okay, so uh, once per attack, you can discard a card to uh, re-roll one die in the case of the solo mode. I don't know, discard jabs. Come on, four plus, four plus. Yeah, that's it. It's four plus. Okay, and one attempt. That's all they get. You are dead. Yay. <laughs> all right. Sorry for uh, thinking the game could so easily be deadlocked. I forgot that the finisher always gets shuffled back in. So yeah, that was a match of uh, all-time wrestling. You can see it's very fast. And yeah, what are my thoughts on this one? Um, you know, I like a lot of 1v1 uh, battling games, Exceed, BattleCon, Soccer Arms, just like all the level 99 ones. And uh, this one isn't really much to my taste. Um, I do find the luck, especially in the solo mode, it's even exacerbated, is a little bit frustrating. The fact that the AI doesn't keep track of stamina, the fact that their deck like always goes through, like all the things that would that are in the like competitive game that kind of model the back and forth and your fighter getting tired, like most of them aren't represented here. So it's even though I know that would have added probably more crunch than they wanted to model that, I do feel like it kind of uh, takes away some of the heart of the game. And this like die, I appreciate that it's a quick way to figure out how the enemy blocks, but I find they block one to two damage attacks way too often. For the actual players, you're almost never going to block those, except if they play three in a row, one to two damage attacks, which then you can block with only stamina, so it really makes sense. But here, because a third of the time they're blocking like your little weenie attacks, it's like they would never do that. And then, of course, they like don't reverse when they could. They can reverse too many times. So I find the swinginess of this die kind of frustrating uh, when I enjoy the competitive play more. 
and I find against the uh, AI, the matches tend to be like blowouts one way or the other, just not necessarily very fun for me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, other people might like it more. I'm, I'm not a huge like fan of wrestling in general, so I think the theme is not a selling point for me, but for others it will be. And I do think the competitive play is pretty fun. Uh, I played with my son quite a bit. And again, they do have this cool like chapter-based solo campaign thing where you're like leveling up and becoming like a face or a heel. I think wrestling fans will just eat that up. So I'm maybe not the target audience for this one as much, but definitely not a keeper for me. I don't find the solo play uh, interesting enough, and I already have other options that I enjoy much more for this type of game. But I hope this one was uh, helpful for you. Go check out the crowdfunding page for the extreme edition of the game if you want to see it in action. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.